Well, folks, looking back at history, people have come up with some pretty weird stuff sometimes, even though the weirdness isn't always in the stuff itself, but sometimes rather in how it's combined, or that this and that is combined at all. In general, combination weapons can be seen as pretty weird overall, although, to be fair, a bayonet mounted on a musket is technically a combination weapon, and there's really nothing weird about that. And there's also pretty nice looking examples, like this Belgian Sabre here with pinfire revolver from 1860. Uh, I definitely like how this fits together. This, this really looks like it belongs together, even though it seems kind of weird to us nowadays. It's, it's like a real-life gun blade. But the way they did it is primarily a saber that just also happens to have the ability to shoot, and it's done in a pretty tasteful way, and it, it's, it looks fairly unobtrusive. All right, I'll start out with some... not sure if they're honorable mentions. Let's just call them mentions. The gun key that I've actually made a separate video about that's designed to shoot unruly prisoners through the door. The lantern shield that I've made a separate video about and the lantern pistol. These are pretty strange. Links to the videos down below. So do you know that awkward moment when you can't decide between an axe and a sword? Why not both? Here's a battle axe with a hidden sword from India, early 18th century. I mean, I can appreciate the idea overall, because, you know, sometimes there is a job that calls for an axe and sometimes you need more of a finesse weapon, which an axe isn't exactly. So you can have both. The downside, of course, is that a steel haft, even if hollow, is substantially heavier than a wooden one. So you do mess with the balance of the axe a little bit and increase the overall weight. But at least it makes it feasible to hide stuff inside if you have to. And apparently the Germans have the same idea, but they stepped it up a notch. This one here is from 1750. And in addition to the dagger or sword or spike, however you want to call it, there is also a flintlock mechanism right there. So you can chop them, you can stab them, and you can shoot them. A lot of bang for your buck. But they also had the choppy stabby shooty thing in India. This one here is 18th century and uh, again all steel. So the barrel, the half, the dagger grip, everything is steel. So you can imagine, it's so heavy that you better snort some protein powder and have a steroid enema before you start swinging this one around. Okay, I'm joking, it's probably not that bad, but the balance? This is not really axe balance, definitely not gun balance. Um, this is all over the place, but I guess that's kind of the idea. And it's not the first time they like to have the option to either chop or shoot somebody. Uh, this is from the 17th century, again, India. This is a matchlock axe. Pretty uh, odd little thing. I'm doubting the ergonomics on this one. This is the end of the barrel. This is uh, where the ball comes out of. So you have to actually hold this with the axe blade on your shoulder or in the crook of your arm or something. So you fire this thing while the spike and the axe blade is pointing in your direction and there is recoil. It's not necessarily the safest thing that I can imagine being designed. It just depends on how you hold it. I just can't imagine it's terribly practical or comfortable. Here's a European wheel lock axe from the 16th century. That one is just included because of how strange the blade looks. And it's so odd enough that it's got a gun as well, but the shape overall is definitely one of the oddest looking ones that I've seen. It gets way stranger though. Look at this thing. So this is from early 17th century Germany. So the hammer face flips down to reveal five barrels. That's pretty unique. And if I had seen this as a drawing, I would have just dismissed it as silly animation shenanigans. But it is real, apparently. Uh, the most astonishing thing I find about this is who thought it would be a good idea to put a delicate wheel lock mechanism? You know, those were back in the day already known to be hard to maintain and easy to break. 
put that at the striking end of a heavy impact weapon. What could possibly go wrong, right? It also looks rather awkward to handle and aim. I mean, I guess you can't really aim it. It's just vaguely pointed in the direction of whatever you want to destroy and hope for the best, I suppose. Next up, a flashlight revolver from the 1920s. Uh, this one has got a double action folding trigger. It's uh, chambered in 22 rimfire, which by the way is an anemic and unreliable cartridge. But uh, yeah, so the revolver mechanism is here. That goes into the flashlight. The flashlight's got a sliding button to turn it on and off. And, uh, well, what can I say? I mean, nothing says Murica like having a gun in your flashlight. I mean, it's much better than just mounting a flashlight onto a firearm. That's so mainstream, bro. Next up, a sword cane and war hammer from Germany, 1580 to 1590. So, yeah, I mean, if... If a sword cane isn't enough for you and you just need needed to pack a bit more of a punch and in case you're jumped by rogue knights in an alley somewhere, then there you go. Warhammer cane sword. If you really can't decide what you need, then you, you just bring it all. Um, I mean, if that's not multi-purpose enough for you yet, the sword cane hammer must get rest in case you're also carrying a musket with you, just in case you have to shoot somebody. We, we've been through this before. Uh, so yeah, you can put the musket up there if you need to. And yeah, there you go. I mean, I do like this design, actually. It's, it's kind of ludicrous, but, you know, at least they made the hammer and spike relatively slim. So it doesn't it doesn't weigh a ton as long as the blade locks properly into the scabbard and doesn't you know fall apart when you try to strike something in the warhammer configuration. What more do you want, right? Well, this is starting to be like the Swiss Army knife of Renaissance armament. Speaking of which, yep, here is an actual pocket knife that's also a pistol. This is two forty-eight caliber smooth bore barrels and uh, it's from 1850 to 1860. So cocking the hammers drops the triggers, which are also corkscrews. Doesn't seem like the most comfortable thing ever, but then again, the corkscrew part is low enough that your fingers probably won't touch it. You can see it deployed. There's the corkscrew triggers, hammers, there's the percussion caps, all ready to go. And the knife blade is up here. And this is not even a one-of-a-kind piece. I found a number of these when looking around. So even though it's not standard the same way that a regular pocket knife or a regular pistol is, they seem to have been at least somewhat popular. But what if you're worried about a threat when you're vulnerable? You're just sitting down having a meal. History's got you covered. Yes, so this is flintlock cutlery. It's the Germans again. They sure like their combination stuff. Germans and Indians. That's it's a thing apparently. So this <laughs> fork and knife, you can see the flintlock mechanism there, is to me is almost the level of paranoia seen in people who wrap a loaded pistol in a waterproof bag and drop it in the water tank in their toilet. You know, just in case somebody breaks in and they need a gun while they're under the shower. Um, yeah, just in case, you know, you need to defend yourself while eating. There you go. Don't get black powder in your food, though. And again, this is not the only example. See, this kind of technology would have come in really handy for the Red Wedding. So do you like Indian Qatars? I sure do. They're pretty awesome. But what if you want to shoot somebody rather than stab them? There's got to be an option for that, right? And they thought of it. So here is a Qatar from the late 19th to early 20th century that has a smoothbore barrel inside. This is the same uh, concept as with a scissor Qatar, where you and you squeeze the grip, the two side, two halves of the hollow blade open, and another blade is revealed. And uh, this, yeah, apparently works with the barrels as well. And here you can see the nipple where the percussion cap goes. So you front load the barrel, as usual, pouring in powder, stuffing the ball down, and then you cap it with a percussion cap, 
and it's ready to go. You just have to squeeze it and point at somebody angrily and shoot them. And here's another take on that concept, 19th century. So here's a Qatar with two triggers and flintlock mechanisms on each side and rifled barrels. You know, because you really need that extra accuracy when firing short barrels with no sights. And from what I've seen, there seem to be quite a number of these, uh, some with flintlock, some with percussion locks right here. So yeah, apparently they like them and not gonna lie, I'd love to own one of these. That would be pretty awesome. Uh, it's definitely an interesting concept. But what if you're really hardcore? and slapping a gun mechanism on a sword or some other blade just won't cut it for you. What if what you really need is a sword that is the gun? Well, the Burmese have got you covered. This percussion sword here is from 1855, and um, you can see well, the barrel with the nipple for the percussion cap is the handle of the sword. In other words, you sheathe your sword in your gun stock. How do you beat that? How do you even? I, I mean, come on, how is this not in a movie or an anime? I mean, maybe it is, maybe I'm just not aware of it, but you'd think this would become popular pretty quickly. So the auction says exceedingly rare. Yeah, no kidding. Also exceedingly badass, if you ask me. Um, practicality. I mean, I've seen worse, for sure, and I really have to appreciate the ingenuity and the basically just we don't care. We we will put this sword in the gun stock and the sword is the gun. And I mean, you just got to respect the audacity here. Just imagine somebody shoots at you and misses and you're like, oh, yeah, well, no, I got to charge them. And they put the thing down, grab the barrel and just unsheath a sword out of the gun. That's just, yeah, I, I like it. So um, 5,500 US dollars, by the way, if you want to own this, that's what the auction said. If you're looking for more affordable reproduction weapons, link down below. How's that for a shameless pug? Wait, what? Anyway, I hope you found the video interesting. The research for making it was definitely interesting. There's a lot of strange stuff. Um, just, just one more, just for the heck of it. This is not technically a combination weapon because it's just one weapon, but this is a pata. They didn't care at all. Just screw you. I will stab you with the tail of a bird. Anyway, so if you did like it, consider supporting the channel on Patreon. I put up occasional extra content there and there's Discord servers for patrons where everybody can hang out and talk about a bunch of things and we do live videos together and all that. It's a really nice, cozy little community. If you can tolerate all the memes, that is. Anyway, thanks for watching. Have a good one, folks.